You've touched it at least 10 times today. It's gripping your phone, sealing your shower, lining your oven mitts, maybe even sitting inside your body right now. But here's what nobody tells you. Silicone was considered completely useless for 40 years. A failed experiment a scientist couldn't give away. So how did laboratory garbage become the material that medicine, aerospace, and your kitchen cannot live without? Let's explore the process. The story starts in 1904 with a British chemist named Frederick Kipping. He wasn't trying to invent anything revolutionary. He just wanted to create synthetic rubber. Natural rubber was expensive and difficult to source, and the world desperately needed alternatives. Kipping spent years combining silicon with organic compounds, hoping something useful would emerge. What he got instead was a gooey, sticky substance that didn't behave like rubber at all. It wasn't bouncy. It wasn't moldable. Just useless paste that stuck to everything it touched. Kipping was so disappointed, he gave it a dismissive name, silicone. A throwaway joke combining silicon with ketone, even though the material contained no ketones at all. He published his findings and moved on, convinced he had wasted years of research chasing a dead end. For decades, silicone sat forgotten in dusty chemistry journals. Then World War II changed everything. Aircraft engines were failing at high altitudes where temperatures dropped to negative 40 degrees. Rubber seals cracked and leaked fuel. Lubricants froze solid. Electrical insulation fell apart. Pilots were dying because no material could survive both the freezing stratosphere and scorching engine heat. The military desperately needed something that worked in extreme conditions. Someone remembered Kipping's old research. That useless sticky goo had one interesting property buried in his notes. It didn't seem to care about temperature at all. Corning Glass Works and Dow Chemical both received military contracts to turn Kipping's failed experiment into something truly useful. But making silicone at scale was brutally difficult. Kipping's laboratory process couldn't produce anywhere near enough for military needs. The chemistry was wildly unpredictable. One batch would come out perfect, the next completely worthless. Temperature had to be controlled within very narrow ranges. Any contamination ruined everything. For three long years, scientists worked around the clock, burning through millions with frustratingly inconsistent results. The military kept pushing for faster progress. Pilots kept dying in planes with failing seals. Finally, in 1943, Dow Corning cracked the manufacturing code. They developed a reliable process that could produce silicone in industrial quantities. The sticky mess had become a strategic military asset. But here's the kicker. The property that made silicone truly invaluable wasn't temperature resistance. It was something nobody expected. Surgeons discovered that when silicone touched human tissue, nothing happened. No inflammation, no rejection, no allergic reaction. The human body simply couldn't tell silicone was there. This was revolutionary. Every other synthetic material triggered immune responses. Metals corroded inside the body, plastics degraded, and released harmful chemicals. But silicone just sat there, invisible to the body's defenses. By the 1960s, medical-grade silicone was being used in implants, heart valves, and prosthetics. The same material sealing your shower was now sealing wounds inside human bodies. Today, Silicone production starts with something you walk on every day. Sand. Specifically, silicon dioxide, heated to over 1700 degrees Celsius, until it becomes pure silicon metal, glowing white-hot in massive industrial furnaces. 
This molten silicon gets treated with methyl chloride gas, creating compounds that react to form long molecular chains. Unlike plastic built on carbon backbones, silicone uses alternating silicon and oxygen atoms. This structure is what makes everything possible. The silicon-oxygen bond doesn't break down from heat, cold, or UV radiation the way carbon bonds do. By adjusting the manufacturing process, factories can produce silicone as runny as cooking oil, as soft as gel, or as firm as rubber. One base material, infinite forms. What nobody tells you is silicone's dark secret. It doesn't break down, ever. That spatula you throw away will exist longer than human civilization itself. Unlike plastic, silicone doesn't fragment into microplastics that poison oceans and enter food chains. It just sits there, chemically inert, essentially immortal. But where it gets strange is whether that's actually better or worse. Inert waste versus toxic waste. Which problem would you rather leave for your grandchildren? Silicone can technically be recycled, but almost no facilities actually do it. Most silicone products end up in landfills, unchanged for thousands of years. The stability that makes silicone perfect for medical implants makes it an environmental question mark. 120 years ago, Frederick Kipping looked at his sticky creation and saw complete failure. Today, silicone generates over $20 billion annually. It seals the space station, cushions artificial joints, protects electronics from moisture, and makes cupcakes slide out perfectly clean. The difference between silicon and silicone finally makes sense through this history. Silicon is the raw element pulled from sand. Silicone is what happens when you combine it with oxygen and carbon, creating something nature never intended. One letter separates an element from an industry. One frustrated scientist separates a failed experiment from a material revolution. So next time you squeeze a silicone spatula or stretch a phone case, you're holding 40 years of failure, transformed into the most versatile synthetic material ever created. A sticky mess that couldn't become rubber. A dismissed experiment that ended up winning a war. A laboratory reject now living inside millions of human bodies. Kipping never saw any of it. He died in 1949, still convinced his silicone was worthless. So, what's the most surprising place you've found silicone hiding in your life?